So, what should we talk about tonight? Uh, did you want to get in on um, talking about um, what were we going to talk about? I thought we had some go. Oh, smoke signals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Victor, where's your wig? <laughs> smoke signals. There's a movie about a short story written by Sherman Alexi. Sherman Alexa. Alexi. Alexis. <laughs> Whatever. Some shanab. And uh, he, it's a story about these two, two guys. I wouldn't even call them friends at first. People think, oh, it's a buddy movie. It's a travel buddy movie. About two Indian friends who leave the reservation in search of adventure. But it's not really that. What Smoke Signals is really about, in spite of the cover... <laughs> what? That's Irene Bedard. Yeah, she's beautiful. Yeah, I know. That's such a Hollywood thing they did. What do you mean? Well, Irene Bedard is not that big of a character in the movie. <laughs> really? Yeah. I don't even think she was in the short story. But, yeah, she's the hot one. So, of course, she gets her her stupid, beautiful face on the cover of the movie poster. You would think this was a movie about Irene Bedard. This is a movie about a girl who, for some reason, snagged some fat old man who died. And then she had to call his uh, wife and kids and tell them to come pick up his... Uh, Ashes. She's, he was stinking up the trailer. <laughs> Would be one way you could tell this story <laughs> if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah. But Smoke Signals is a story of two guys who grew up together. I guess they were friends, really. They grew up together. And uh, the movie starts out where Thomas builds the fire. That's his name. Thomas builds a fire. He's just a baby. And his, uh... Oh, uh, should, I, should I play the smoke signals thing right away? Well, we won't have a transition um, song. Maybe I can find something for that. The movie opens up with this. I'm just going to play it. Okay. Good morning. This is Randy Peone on k -Rez Radio, the voice of the Coeur d'Alene Indian Reservation. And it's time for the morning traffic report on this rainy bicentennial 4th of July. Let's go out to Lester Falls Apart in the k -Rez traffic van, broken down at the crossroads. A uh, big truck just went by. Now it's gone. Well, there you go, folks. Looks like just another busy morning. I just got a news bulletin that says Maddie and John Builds the Fire are hosting a 4th of July party at their house. And remember, it's BYOF. Bring your own fireworks. On July 4, 1976, my mother and father celebrated white people's independence by hosting the largest house party in Coeur d'Alene tribal history. I mean... Every Indian in the world was there. And then, at three in the morning, when everyone had passed out on couches, chairs, the floor, a fire rose up like General George Armstrong Custer and swallowed up my mother and father. I don't remember that fire. I only have the stories. And in every one of those stories, I could fly. Eileen, your son's name is Victor Emmett. Yes, it is. It's a good name. It means he's going to win. I don't know. I was just a baby when Arnold Joseph saved me from that fire and delivered me into the hands of my grandmother. And Victor Joseph was just a baby too when his father saved me from that fire. You saved my grandson's life. Well... It was nothing. I didn't even think about it. I just... You saved Thomas! You did a good thing! I, I, I didn't mean to. 
You know, there are some children who aren't really children at all. They're just pillar of fire that burn everything they touch. And there are some children who are just pillars of ash that fall apart and touch them. Me and Victor, we were children born of flame and ash. That's such a cool way to start a movie. But anyway, so movie opens up with uh, Thomas being thrown out of this burning house. And it's just amazing. But then they grow up on the res. And Victor's dad leaves them after a, a night of heavy drinking, partying, and that. And his mom wakes up and she's all like, We ain't doing this no more. You hear me? I'm done drinking. And he's all like, oh, I'm all hung over, man. And he slaps her and runs away, drives off, and that's it. Victor grows up, never seen his dad again. Then one day they get a call. Victor's dad is uh, dead. But good news is he got to hook up with Irene Bedard for a little while before the end. And uh, if you want his pickup and a basketball, you can come out and get him. In Phoenix, Arizona. Or right out in the desert outside of Phoenix, apparently. So they, they leave the uh, the reservation. Um, they get bus tickets. And they meet up with a couple of girls who are driving backwards. And they're like, have you had your vaccinations? And Victor's all like, oh, come on. Don't you start with that. <laughs> no, I'm not wearing a mask either. Come on, it's 1996. Give me a few years before we have to worry about vaccinations and booster shots, all right? And so they go off, and they go down to uh, their dad's place, and they meet Irene Bedard, and she's like, here you go. And they sneak off, and they get in a car wreck, and then they get home and they're buddies. And this is the story of smoke signals and Irene Bedard's face. You know, I met her once. Did you really? Yeah. When I was in Annie Humphrey's band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we played at this thing down at uh, Mystic Lake Casino. Um, Mystic Lake is the big casino down in the city. It's down in Shakopee. And they have big, uh, I don't know, events down there. And they're having like uh, Native American music night or something. And so we were invited to play with all these other bands too. And in between the different acts, they would have like celebrity uh, guest, you know, announcers. So like the guy who played Wind in His Hair in uh, Dances with Wolves, he was there. Oh, really? Yeah, whatever that actor's name was. He comes out. <laughs> and by this time, uh, Wind in His Hair is a character in Dances with Wolves. And uh, by this time, he had cut his hair and bleached it blonde for some reason. And all the Indians backstage were teasing him. They are like, hey, look out. Here comes blonde in his hair. <laughs> oh, that's nuts. But like the, the, the movie star, Indian movie star would come out and say, okay, up next. You know, here's uh, Annie Humphrey and her band. You know, we'd come out. But the lady who announced us was Irene Bedard. And uh, so she's backstage, and you go back to the green room or whatever. And there she is, staring into a mirror. And it's one of those mirrors with the light bulbs all around it. Oh, yeah, that's cool. You know, one of those big makeup mirrors or whatever. And you don't really notice in the movie, but she is very fit. Really? Yeah. I mean, this was a long time ago. I don't know what she looks like anymore. But back in the 90s, oh, <laughs> uh, you could tell she had like a trainer or something. She was just strong. Like her arms were just muscular. She had no body fat. <laughs> you sure? You, you seem like you really checked her out. Yeah, I did. Sorry. <laughs> I don't mind. And, uh, and then... Uh, she was just stunningly beautiful, but kind of fake looking, if I'm being honest. Really? Yeah, she wore a lot 
of makeup. It didn't look like it until you got up close and went, wow, you just caked that on, don't you? <laughs> no, really? Yeah. She looked very Hollywood when I saw her backstage. Yeah, and she didn't really, I just kind of poked my head and went, hey, how's it going? I liked you in smoke signals. And she was like, yeah. That was about it. She didn't want to talk. <laughs> no. I did meet uh, the girl who was in the uh, car where there's those two ladies driving backwards. Oh, really? Yeah. There was uh, the one lady who was on Northern Exposure, the chubby one. I didn't meet her. But the other one was... Uh, what's her name? What's her name, sweetie? I thought I was pretending I didn't know this. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, St. John, Michelle St. John. Yeah, Michelle St. John. Yeah, I hung over with her at a conference one weekend. So I did meet her. And those are the only two Indian actresses I think that there are. Is that it? Yeah. You know, they usually get Hispanic people to play an Indian. <laughs> yeah.